Well hi there everybody, Wrangler speaking and I haven't been back with a video for quite some time and I'm about to tell you why that is the case. It's because I've been hard at work developing some software, specifically an MP2 and MP3 decoder for the Amiga. What we're looking at here is an Amiga playing an MP2 file. Uh, whilst doing so with, we will see the CPU in a minute through show config. It's a 68030 CPU. So how is it possible to play an MP2 file with an 030 CPU? Well, ordinarily it isn't. The 030, great CPU though it is, is simply not powerful enough to do that. What we're looking at here is not a traditional Amiga. It is the AA3000 Plus recreation of a prototype that contains also a DSP3210 chip on it. And it's the DSP chip that's doing a lot of the decoding here and then playing the results through Paula using 14-bit stereo sound output. More on the technical details of that in a minute. I just want to show you the uh, CPU usage bar up here. There is uh, cycles left over even though it's playing an MP2. They are available for doing other things but don't expect your system to be quite as responsive as it normally is while it's doing uh, decoding. That was an MP2 what about an MP3? Well, here's that same track as an MP3. So decoding of both of those is perfectly possible. What I discovered, in fact, in writing this software is that what I thought most of my uh, music tracks were were MP3s because the extension on the file name was .mp3. In reality, it turned out that the encoding in most occasions was an MP2, in other words, MPEG-1 Layer 2 encoding. More on the di differences between Layers 2 and 3 in a moment, but suffice to say, here is a bit of software where you can play MP3s on your O30 Amiga, provided you've got that DSP chip within. So how does the software work? Let's take a walk through that. There are really three steps to the overall MPEG device. The first of those is to take the overall file. I'm going to call it a music file here just for simplicity, the music file, and extract from it a so-called frame. Now, the MPEG standard does define what a frame is. In short, it is the encoding of a very short period of the music file, only a few milliseconds, and that's divided up into an individual frame. So step one is to extract that frame. Step two is to decode it from the MPEG format into pulse code modulation. And then that is what Paula can use to play the pulse code modulation. And I've set up the player to do that in 14-bit stereo. How those responsibilities split up? Well, the CPU handles step one, or the file I.O., as you might expect. It then hands over the frame to the DSP chip to do the heavyweight decoding. And then the final step falls back to the CPU to play the pulse code modulation file through Paula because that's a system operation. And in fact, because the CPU, Paula and the DSP can all access the memory bus independently, to some extent, each of the three of those chips can operate simultaneously on different parts of this process. And for added speed, we're double buffering here so that while Paula is playing one frame, the DSP chip is decoding the next one. And in fact, on a technicality, Paula's own playing is double buffered so you don't get any gaps between the different segments it's playing. But what about the decoders themselves? Well, there are two of those, as I've hinted already. The first one is for MPEG Layer 2, or MP2s, as they're often called. And uh, that provides something of the order of 5 to 1 compression of the underlying sound file or music file. And I would describe that as needing a complex decoder. Quite a lot of work needs to be done to decode that file. And then we get to the other type of 
uh, encoding MPEG-1 layer 3 or MP3s which can compress something like 12 to 1 and I would describe as a very complex coder with all the different steps in it. Incidentally the two forms of encoding are entirely separate there's no real overlap between them um, other than some fundamental uh, concepts like bit streams. Exactly how complex is the MP3 decoder? Well, let me just show you through some of the lines of the program here. Uh, it contains elements for Huffman decoding, inverse modified discrete cosine transformation, anti-alias butterflies, windowing, and many other things too. In fact, it runs to over two and a half thousand lines of code before we come to the various constants that are needed for the operations. And that brings me to an important point here, which is getting the full performance out of the system. Just as a reminder, the DSP chip can access the full four gigabytes of memory space just the same as the CPU can. However, it also has access to a massive eight kilobytes of onboard RAM just for itself. Obviously, the CPU can't see any of that, just the DSP. Why is that important? Well, the onboard RAM runs something like three to four times faster in terms of memory access than the rest of the memory space. So uh, it's even faster than fast RAM. So in order to get the performance required for MP3 decoding in particular, it's important to use that 8K of onboard RAM to the maximum extent, whether that's uh, instructions or constants, data, or a mixture of the two, getting that combination right is the key to performance. And I should say the decoder at the moment out of that 8K uh, onboard RAM space only has about 40 bytes left available. That shows you how much I've had to cram into the 8K space to get the performance out of it. Having said all that, there are some limitations at the moment. These are things that I will be looking at in the future if all goes well. Um, this first set of limitations is true for both of the decoders. They make use of a frequency divider. To some extent, that is a limitation of Paula itself because playing at very high frequencies is requires some um, particular setup of Paula, which I haven't turned to yet, but there is a frequency divider in place currently, either two or four. So what does that mean? That means if your underlying uh, music file is recorded at a frequency of 48,000 hertz, Paula is playing back either, divide that by four and it's 12,000 hertz, or divide it by two, 24,000 hertz. And in fact, for MP3s, the frequency divider at the moment has to be a 4 divided by 4. The second thing is, in order to get the best performance, I really recommend using amplifier. It is lightweight. It doesn't impose much uh, resource requirements on the rest of the system. Uh, that is one reason, by the way, while, why the uh, software plays um, directly to Paula rather than through AHI is for performance reasons, simply quicker to um, output the PCM files directly for, to Paula for the Amiga to play. There are some specific limitations for MP3s that don't apply to MP2s. What are those? Well, you need to keep the bit rate down uh, somewhere in the order of 96 kilobits per second or lower and stick to 32,000 as the underlying frequency rate of the music file. Like I say, I might be able to look at this again to see whether I can raise those limitations. And again, for space reasons, at the moment, joint stereo files are not supported by MP3. They are by layer two MP2s. So that's how the software works at a super high level. Let's go back to the Amiga now.
Well, I hope I've excited you enough about this decoder software. The question that's probably on your mind is, well, where do I get this from so I can use it on my own machine? And the answer to that is it's on my GitHub page with the address there on the screen right now. Now, it's taken me a huge amount of effort to create this software, even to this extent so far. Uh, probably about 18 months I've been working on this project whilst getting on with everything else in life as well. So if you'd like to support what I've done already and encourage me to develop and optimize the software further, there is the possibility on that GitHub page to leave a donation. Obviously, there is no obligation to the software is free to download and for you to use. In time, once I'm happy with the state of the decoder, uh, I might put it on Aminet so it's available there, but for now on the GitHub page. Hopefully though, throughout the different things that I've been developing on the Amiga over the last several years, you'll have seen what the DSP chip is capable of. First of all, producing Mandelbrots and those pretty pictures. Uh, on an 030 Amiga at pace. Secondly, 3D demos. And then uh, what we're listening to here, which is an MP3 decoder, all using the motherboard CPU. Just shows what might have been possible had, Amiga, had Commodore uh, developed the Amiga prototype into a production machine. Sadly though, they didn't do that. They canceled that design and developed the A4000 instead. Maybe in some alternate reality, that machine was uh, made into a production version. We'll never know. Well, that's enough nostalgia for me. It's time for me to say goodbye until the next video. Hope you've enjoyed listening. Bye for now.